wanted to do a short little video to show you the Dutch uh, cheese press and give you some idea of how it works. I've used it in two uh, videos so far making cheese, but neither of those videos are out yet because the cheese are still in. This is sitting on top of my cheese cave refrigerator, and those cheeses are still in the cheese refrigerator here, uh, ripening and aging. So eventually, there'll be a video out that shows me using this. A couple of videos so far, anyway. But I. I was undecided when I first got the thing if I really liked it or not because um, it has three positions here on this arm. Four positions. Yeah, four positions on the arm where you hang weights. And depending on where you place the weights along the arm, due to the laws of physics, that I never was much of a physics student, but it, it puts different amounts of pressure. The first position here, whatever weight you hang from that, it multiplies the weight by two. The next one it multiplies by two and a half. The next one by three. And the final one by three and a half. And I had initially thought that I would uh, use plastic milk jugs with water in them, varying amounts of water for the weight. But there isn't clearance enough for the size of mint milk jug that I needed. So I ended up going to Canadian Tire. For those of you in other parts of the world don't know what Canadian Tire is. I presume it started as a tire store due to its name, but it's a big box store now that handles a whole lot of things. And I got these little hand weights, uh, exercise weights, small dumbbells, whatever, and I've placed wire on them. And using those and they work very well. I was pleased to discover that you don't have to buy a whole set of these. Um, you can buy them individually so I guess all together I bought uh, six I guess. Um, several two pounders, one one pounder, uh, one three, one four, and one ten pounder. So I'll show you those as I do my little demonstration here plus I'll add a clip of it actually in use. And it came with this cheese mold and a follower. You put the follower on top of the curd, which is also in a cheesecloth butter muslin, and then it goes, it goes in here. And the uh, arm comes down on the, of course it would be full of curd at the time, on the follower and it continues to put pressure on depending on how many weights you use. I was concerned that that might be too small, but that's the ideal size uh, for almost any cheese that you make using two gallons of milk, and that's as large as I can do at this time. I just purchased a new stainless steel pot to do two gallons in, and it, it holds a bit more than two gallons, but the next um, increase that I can find in most cheese recipes is four gallons and I don't anticipate ever buying a stainless steel pot large enough to hold that much liquid. Anyway, the uh, weights, as I say, go on the arm. That is a three pound weight at the two pound position, so that makes six pounds. This one is a four pounder at two and a half. So that's nine pounds, I guess. And, oh, this is my heaviest weight, the 10-pounder, and I'll put that for easy math, I'll put it on the three-pound position, so that becomes 30 pounds of weight. That gives you an idea of how it works, and now I will add a little clip um, of the last cheese that I made using it. This setup is from when I made the Colby cheese that's in the cheese fridge aging supposed to have 50 pounds of pressure on the curd and I had put 14 out at the end where it uh, measures multiplies by 3.5 that gives you 49 pounds one pound at the two point multiplication point which gives you two pounds for a total of 51 pounds I wasn't able to get exactly 50 pounds but it gives you an idea of how it works anyway and I'm very pleased and satisfied with it so Thank you very much for watching. That's a little demonstration of the Dutch cheese press.